Our third and final reading this morning, the gospel reading, comes from Luke's account where Jesus tells us a parable about praying. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is uh, the word of the Lord and the basis for my message to you this morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Have you ever made a list of pros and cons for some reason, even if it was just done mentally in your head, a mental list? Perhaps you've done this when you are facing uh, some kind of big decision. Let's say, for example, whether or not to take a new job or whether or not to make a big purchase of some sort, like a new car or something. Or these days you may even list the pros and cons of going to the grocery store or a restaurant or some such thing. But I bet you've never thought about the pros and cons of praying. Well, this morning I, I want to do just that, or at least part of that anyway. I want us to consider the cons of praying. Now, of course, I don't mean the bad things about praying. Is there even such a thing? No, the cons I'm talking about are very much positive things, things that Jesus encourages us to do here in this text. Uh, Luke, as he tells us this account, makes it crystal clear right from the beginning, right from the first verse, exactly what point Jesus wants to get across to his disciples. And by the way, are we not his modern-day disciples? And so this text is certainly appropriate for us, right? But Luke says right there at the beginning, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. In, in other words, Jesus encourages us to two cons of praying. To pray constantly and to pray confidently. Right? And granted, those two things are so closely related, they're like two sides of the same coin, they go, they go hand in hand, but each one also has its own unique nuance, and so we want to address each of them separately. So this morning, based on this gospel reading that's before us this morning, I, want, I invite you to consider the cons of praying. Pray constantly and pray confidently. Now, praying constantly is perhaps the most obvious point of the parable that, that Jesus uh, speaks here. On the one hand, we sometimes call this the parable of the unjust judge because uh, the very first thing that Jesus mentions is this judge who doesn't care about God, doesn't care about his constituents. He is unjust. On the other hand, we sometimes call this the parable of the persistent widow because the other character in the story is, of course, this widow who has some grievance that apparently can only be settled by this judge. And so as Jesus tells the story, it says, she kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Jesus doesn't say exactly what the grievance was, as it doesn't really matter. Jesus doesn't say how long this went on either, but apparently it was long enough that this judge, who otherwise didn't care at all about her, finally uh, came to her aid and helped her. In fact, he says, 
the judge says, because this widow keeps bothering me, I'm going to see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. Did you catch how the judge talks about her behavior? He says, you know, she keeps bothering him. She's going to wear me out. This was definitely a persistent widow, wasn't she? Jesus' point for us is, is clear, I think. This persistent widow is an example of what God would love for us to be like as we uh, talk to him and deal with him. He wants us to keep on bothering him. He wants us to try to wear him out. He loves that. He wants that from us. He wants us to be a, a persistent pest like a fly that won't go away. That's what he loves. You know, the judge in that story I, uh, was clearly annoyed by this woman because he didn't like her. But our God is just the opposite of that. He absolutely does care for us. And so this is an annoying behavior to him at all. In fact, he is, in this parable, inviting us to do just that, to keep on bothering him, to wear him out. And so go ahead, folks. Just you try to wear God out with your prayers. That's what he wants. He wants us to always pray and pray constantly. Now, now mind you, uh, when I say pray constantly, we're not just talking about actively praying your whole life long about different things. No, no, what we're talking about here today is praying for a particular thing, for something specific. Okay? Uh, that, that persistent, or that widow was persistent about a particular grievance. It wasn't like she was coming to the judge with all kinds of different complaints. It was one grievance that she had that she kept coming back and uh, forth to him. And so I ask you this morning, what particular thing is on your mind today? Or what's something specific that maybe has been on your mind for a long time now? God says, hey, talk to me. Tell me about it. And if it is something you've been praying about for a long time now, great. Keep on praying. And if you wake up tomorrow and you feel like your prayer still isn't answered, then pray again. And if next week comes and your prayer still isn't answered, guess what? Pray again. And next month, we'll pray again. And, and next year, pray again. And again. And again. And again. Now, if, if 10 years comes and your prayer still isn't answered, well, then it's probably time to stop bugging God, right? No. No, God wants us to keep on praying. That's what he wants, even if that means our whole life long. Now, now let me just be extra, extra clear here. I don't want you to sign off today saying, all right, I'm going to take this to heart. Uh, I'm going to take this text and message to heart. I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to pray one more time. No, one more time is not the point. God wants us to pray constantly for whatever it is that's on your mind, for as long as it takes. Whatever's bugging you, keep on bugging God as long as it takes. Now, if you're anything like me, and by that I mean human, you know that's uh, not easy to put into practice, right? Right? I think part of that is because uh, our, our culture today, in our culture today, we're so used to instant results, right? What with, with fast food and, and same-day delivery from, from Amazon and uh, on-demand shows from Netflix and the instant global communications through the Internet and our phones and whatever, we are used to instant results. And if we don't get instant results from God, oh man, we get impatient with him, right? Maybe even downright angry. God, you're late on your delivery, <laughs> And, uh, and uh, it, maybe it's not just uh, being used to instant results. Maybe it's just because we're so busy. Right? From the time we take our head off the pillow in the morning to the time we lay it back down on the pillow at night, we are going 90 miles per hour running this rat race that is our life. And so who has time to pray? Much less pray again and again and again and again. Or maybe it's just that we're spiritually lazy, apathetic even. But I want you to remember this and know this. 
whatever it is that keeps you from praying constantly, know that even those sins are paid for by Jesus. I want you to always remember why Jesus came. He came not for the righteous, but for sinners. He didn't come into this world to have a great meet and greet with all those awesome prayer warriors of the world to pat them on the back, although he's certainly pleased with their praying. Oh, he came into this world to take our sins off our back and bear them on his own. And so if you have faltered in your praying like I have, then I invite you to join along with me and and look and gaze at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and there behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then as a renewed, restored, forgiven child of God, child of our Heavenly Father, hear his gracious invitation to you to keep on bugging him about whatever's bugging you. To always pray, to pray constantly. That's what he loves for us to do. That's the first con of praying then, to pray constantly. Uh, The second con that Jesus talks about here is just as important. In fact, like I said, it goes hand in hand with the other, like two sides of the same coin, and that is to pray confidently. I suppose you could pray constantly, but not necessarily confidently. And, and Luke, remember, as he uh, explains what was going on here, he says, Jesus told this parable so that we would always pray and not give up. And the idea of that word there is, has to do with like heart failure, almost literally, uh, uh, being faint-hearted. And so Jesus is saying, I don't want you to have spiritual heart failure here, folks. If you've been praying for a while now and your prayer isn't answered, Jesus wants you to still pray confidently each and every time. Now, once again, I know that's not easy to put into practice, right? Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the saying, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again, right? Well, yeah. But at some point of not succeeding, we're going to stop trying. That's our nature, right? We're going to give up. You know, we're going to say, well, enough's enough already. I'm tired of beating my head against a wall and, and, and not getting anywhere. And so then we, we say, well, it's just not worth it. And we give up on God. Right? And we start to think, well, why bother? And if we, even if we do keep on praying, we've got to ask ourselves, well, now are we just now going through the motions, or doing this mechanically, maybe even half-heartedly, as if we're just kind of hoping for the best from God but not really expecting it almost like wishing upon a star or throwing a coin in a wishing well or whatever. Is it kind of a pessimistic prayer that God gets from us? Jesus knows we're prone to these kinds of heart failures. In fact, at the very end of this account, he asks this kind of biting question, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? He realizes that when we fail to pray constantly to him, that's just a symptom of a deeper issue down here in our heart. It's a symptom of heart failure, of spiritual heart failure, of not being confident in God. And so once again, I want to remind you of this very important fact. As much as Jesus knows we're prone to heart failure, he's also done something about it. He has paid for those sins with his own blood. Even those sins of weak faith, of a lagging faith, those sins of discouragement and doubt, those sins even of giving up on God, even those can be laid at the foot of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ where God will take them away like the morning mist. And in return, he gives us a new heart and that's not prone to heart failure, a strong heart, a strong heart that beats confidently with the sound of prayer. And, and, uh, and here in this text, he, Jesus helps us understand exactly why it is that we can pray confidently. Remember how this parable talked about this unjust judge and how uh, even though he didn't really care about this woman, he still in the end helped her out. The point is that even if a, if a bad, evil man like that will eventually help somebody out that he doesn't care about, how much more will our loving God hear our prayers and respond positively to us? 
In fact, that's the point that Jesus sums up after he tells the story. He says, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Hey, did you catch what Jesus said about you? You're his chosen ones. Right? Yeah, you remember back to your school days when maybe you tried out for an athletic team or a choir or some kind of select group and you had that angst of whether or not you'd make the team or make the cut or maybe you even didn't and you know how it hurts. Out of all the people in the world, and despite our shortcomings, the fact that we're not qualified, God has still chosen us. Right? That's what grace is all about. Though we don't deserve it, God has ch- still chosen us and made us part of his team. He has adopted us into his family to be children of the Heavenly Father. Right? We are his chosen people. And that's what God says about us. But did you then also catch what he said about himself and how he responds? It says, uh, Jesus says that he, uh, that he will see that his chosen ones get justice and get it quickly. First of all, he says we'll get justice. He will do what's right for us. Right? Whether he answers with a yes or a no or a, or, a, or a not yet, he will hear us. He will answer. And he will answer for our good. Do you remember on another occasion when Jesus uh, said, you know, what father when his child asks for bread will give him a snake instead? Yeah. The point being that if a, even an earthly father knows to be good to his children, how much more will our heavenly father do what's good and right for us? He will give us justice. And then it says he will answer quickly. Now that might make us a little skeptical. Isn't that kind of contrary to the whole point of this? Uh, isn't it true that God doesn't necessarily answer quickly? That's why we've got to pray again and again and again. But Jesus says God answers quickly. That's right there in black and white in the Bible. And so maybe it is good for us to remember that what Peter said, that with God a thousand years are like a day. Or maybe it's good that we remember our, our own life, that the these 50, 60, 70, 80 years that we might be blessed with here on earth are, are just a small portion of our everlasting life, right? And so even if it takes 50 years before God answers our prayer, that's still just a quick blip on the screen of our everlasting life. God answers quickly. God forgives us. We are his chosen people. He will answer us with justice and and quickly. All of these things are are the kind of God that we have. The the kind of God then that gives us confidence so that we do pray confidently. So in closing, let me ask you just one more time, what's on your mind today? What do you want to talk to God about? Maybe you got a lot of things on your mind. That's okay. Let me put just one more thing on your mind today, but one more thing that helps you deal with all the others. Let me put on your mind today this parable of the unjust judge and the persistent widow. And as that is on your mind, then consider those two cons of praying. People of God, pray constantly. Remembering that God loves for you to keep on bothering him time and time and time again. And pray confidently, knowing that you have a gracious and loving God and Savior who does hear your prayers and who will answer for your best interest. And for all of that good news, all God's people say, Amen.